we are at the end of our first season in charge of Leeds United. Have we won the league? Following on from the last episode then was a home tie against Ipswich Town. Rafael Garorinski got sent off two minutes in and we drew 0-0. I was actually quite pleased with a 0-0 draw after playing the entire match with 10 men. We then had a home tie against QPR and drew this one 1-1. One, one. Another two points dropped. An own goal put us in front 16 minutes in but they got a 93rd minute equaliser for QPR to earn a point. We did bounce back though with an absolutely fantastic win against Leicester City. Ian Chapman with two and Jim Walker with the other. Next up was West Brom. We beat them 4-0. We were down to 10 men. You guessed it from the second minute. This time it was Armando Harewood who got sent off two minutes in. We were 2-0 up before West Brom then got a man sent off. Um, so with 10 men I think we play better. We then went away from home against Rotherham and 1-2-1. One, one. Jim Walker and Rafael Garorinsky getting the goals in this one. Uh, we did go 1-0 down 20 minutes in, but thankfully the boys responded well. And finally, it was a 1-0 home win against Fulham. A 95th minute winner from Jim Walker after Fulham were down to 10 men from the 57th minute. And that sees the championship table. Yes, we are promoted. Yes, we've won the league. Absolutely fantastic stuff. Ian Chapman top scorer in the assists as well. 107.69 goal difference. Still one game to, to go today, which is against Brentford, who currently sit in third place. They can't get automatic. It's us and Millwall getting the automatic promotion spots. And I'm absolutely delighted with how this season has gone with Leeds. So let's get through this match. Uh, we'll discuss what we're planning to do next season, who we are looking at replacing in the summer. If... Because we've had so much money available to spend in the championship, we have made a numerous signings with the idea that they would actually be our starters in the uh, Premier League. So maybe not as big of changes as you might expect going into the summer transfer window. But then again, it all depends on who's available. But let's get through this game first. Brentford away from home. They're a good side. I want three points. The only changes to our usual start in 11, Armando Harewood is currently suspended after his red card. Kazim Etem is missing for the final game of the season as well, so he misses out through injury. Other than that, we are pretty much full strength. First highlight of the game comes three minutes in. It's a Brentford corner. It's cleared by Mejia, but it comes out to Marlos on the edge of the box. He tries to play it back in. We are defending it pretty well. Um, it looks like Brentford's attack is pretty narrow, and our defensive narrowness is matching that. Of course, Mick Quirk... Our former man at Huddersfield is currently playing in the back as we pinch the ball. Ian Chapman gets past Quirk. He finds Renberg in the box. He gets dispossessed by a last-ditch challenge from the left-back. Almost a good chance for us. We'll stick with this corner, though. Jim Walker plays it in. It gets cleared. Oh, Elmas is breaking from that corner. Endrecker does well. Um, please. There we are. Good chat. Mejai doesn't mess about. He just gets the job done. 21 minutes in, the game is pretty even right now. Ian Chapman does have a free kick. He goes for goal. It was a good strike as well, but Heatley is equal to the challenge. We'll stick with this corner if it allows us, and it does. Ian Chapman is the man to take. It's whipped in. <sighs> Cleared. Another highlight now, Kevin Majaya with the ball in the midfield. We're playing it around the defence. Um, Brentford got a couple of men chasing us down, so hopefully no funny business, boys. We do work it out well to Jim Walker. On this left-hand side, he cuts in, getting past two men. Whips the ball to Renberg on the right-hand side. He cuts in on his favourite left foot, and he gets his second goal of the season. Oscar Renberg, who was signing in January, has been doing fantastic, whilst Kazim Etem is currently injured, and he's improving every single game. That is a beautiful goal to score, cutting in off that right-hand side, getting onto his favourite left foot, and banging it to the back corner. The keeper stood absolutely no chance, 1-0. Three minutes to go before half-time. We do have ourselves another highlight, hopefully. We're not about to give the ball away. Florentino, <laughs> he's making it a bit nervy. Renberg receives the ball on that right-hand side. He cuts in, as is his favourite, uh, under his favourite left foot. Uh, the ball over the top of Jim Walker isn't the greatest, though. He does win it back. Ian Chapman brings it down to Renberg, to Granger in the box. Come on, Granger. Granger, he's a disappointing one. We'll talk about him later. Another highlight now, Pantos for Brentford, bringing it in from the left-hand side. He plays the ball over the top. Garonski, oh, absolute suicide ball back to Griffiths. Thankfully, um, we didn't concede. Tellez with the corner, we'll stick with it. And it's cleared. Is it going to be a counter-attack for us? Renberg brings it forward, the, the sees apart, and he goes for goal. Oscar Renberg, ladies and gentlemen, 
take a bow, my son. Absolutely fantastic two goals today. His third goal of the season. Richard Granger gets himself an assist, but this was all Oscar Rembo. Picks up the ball and pretty much his own half. The C's part. Brentford's defence is completely missing. And we go 2-0 up just before half time. And there we have it then. Brentford nil leads two. Fantastic performance by us so far. Bearing in mind Brentford are currently in third, so the third best side in this league. And even with a couple of key players missing, we are still doing very well. But let's not speak too soon. <laughs> Mejaya does well, wins the ball. Ian Chapman brings it down nicely. Hopefully Brentford won't be countering from this, but he brings it. Oh, he's brought down. It keeps going though with Remberg. He plays the ball through. Jim Walker's there. Sloppy defending by, I'm assuming, is Mason Holgate. And Jim Walker gets his 20th goal of the season from left wing. He has really blossomed this season. Ian Chapman as well has done well. Uh, gets dispossessed it well. He gets fouled here. The referee plays the advantage. Remberg with the ball through. Holgate with a terrible defending. And Walker has the easiest finish of his career. Ian Chapman is struggling a little bit out there. We're going to get our youngster Tony on off the bench. Uh, no further changes required right now. I just wanted to bring on Tony to see if we can develop him a little bit more. He's but he's another one who's been doing well in training alongside Florentino. Ball's played down the left-hand side for Brentford. Though as we get back to the game, Marlos for goal. Griffiths with a good save. Corner for Brentford. Tellez is the man to take it. He's played back post. Gets a... Oh, uh, disallowed. Disallowed. There was some pushing there. I saw some pushing. Another highlight now. Brentford coming down this left-hand side once again with Marlos. He's got the overlap there if he wants to turn around. He goes to Joseph instead. Griffiths can claim the ball. And that is not going to be the highlight. Something else is happening here. We'll continue with the highlight here. Brentford have played it about well in the defence. And they maintain possession as they come forward through the centre midfield. There's our former man Ivan Sunjic from uh, Birmingham City. Marlos out of Sunjic. Pretty sure he scored against us last time when we were in this league with Huddersfield. So can you just behave that Sunjic? With only 15 minutes to go, we'll look to make some further changes. Eber Ezier can come on in the central attack and midfield role. We don't have too many options off the bench, so we'll take off Matthew Gibbons for Matty Cash at right back. Renberg with the free kick, 15 minutes to go. He's played in. Gaurinsky gets his head on it, but it can't get on target. 10 minutes left in this match. Brentford need to find themselves a way back into this game. Dionku finds uh, Sarmiento on the left-hand side. He's blocked by Cash. Closed down by Gaurinsky, and he goes for goal. And it's just, just over the bar. Time is ticking away now. They have went very attacking. We're still on attacking. Uh, probably not the best idea, but we've saw through the rest of this game anyway. Clinical finishing is the difference today. Then Oscar, Renbe oh, Oscar Renberg with two absolutely fantastic goals and Jim Walker with the other. Great performance from the boys. And a great way to end our championship season. Winning the league, of course, was the hope at the beginning of the season. So to be able to see it through and actually able to do it. Millwall have a fantastic season as well. I haven't seen too many sides get 101 points and not win the league. But as you can see from our club vision, top half finish was the aim from the board. We we personally knew the title was what we were aiming for. And we managed to pass that alongside getting to the required spots in the domestic cup competitions. They're very happy with the club culture we've developed. Happy that we're working within the wage budget. And A pluses all round. Well done, lads. And yeah, just a quick look at Oscar Renberg. I know he's, he hasn't got the most potential of any of the signings we signed. But he's just been improving massively. And I enjoy that. So here we are. Then he's the end of season stuff. Ian Chapman wins fans player of the season. Well deserved from Ian. Um, being our striker, he got 26 goals and 15 assists in 45 games. Um, we've got some question marks over Ian Chapman. Whether he is... Our talisman for next season up front. We'll discuss that when we get to the squad. Well, Abengua came in second. The lone centre-half we signed from Barnsley. Ben Pearson coming in third with 18% of the vote. Oscar Renberg's got goal of the season for that Brentford goal that he's just scored. I fully agree. It was a fantastic goal. Uh, Ian Chapman signing of the season and young player of the season as well. Our season in review, we've already seen this. We were expected to finish in the top half by the board. And we managed to actually win the title, which is absolutely huge. In terms of next season's expectations, then they only expect us to fight bravely against relegation. We all know that that is not going to be our aim. Our aim is to beat Barnsley. Um, we are always aiming for Barnsley. That is the yardstick we set ourselves at our very first club. And that is what I will be attempting to do with Leeds United next season. In terms of our transfer budget and things for next season, it is a £40 million budget. So they have actually took some money off my transfer budget, which I had saved. But that's fine. 
because I imagine they've put most of it into the wage budget now. We've got £259,000 in the wages to play with. We all know I'll probably end up spending quite a bit more than that if I can, um, purely down to player sales and stuff like that. But in terms of next season, who have, which players of these are surviving, which are not, I'm thinking I want these players in my starting eleven Now, this all comes with a massive, massive caveat that if I find a better player, a player that's just a step above for a reasonable fee, I'll make the signing even if we've got a good player in that position already, as long as it doesn't hinder my attempts at fitting in some of these squads. So as you can see, I'm aiming for a new centre-back. I really want a top quality centre-back. I think that's been one of the key factors in every single season of how we've been able to progress so well. Alan and Franco are considered the top one for Barnsley. Uh, Andrew Maida with um, Birmingham City and Dvorak with Huddersfield. <laughs> My mind just went blank there. Left back. We definitely need a new left back. Endraker is our current starting left back. A three star, three star. He will be a decent backup, definitely. Um, but I would like someone in there a little bit more competent and someone a bit better well rounded as well. Deep line playmaker. We've been playing Florentino in that role and training him in that role as well. Um, not quite good enough for the Premier League, I don't think. If we compare him to the likes of Icaro, who we've signed in previous years, he's not quite on that level. He is described as a wonder kid. He did only cost us 300k, but um, I'm thinking that we'll probably need an improvement in that area. And Florentino next season will be a very capable backup in a number of positions. Winger as well, our current starting winger is Kazim Etem. His potential is pretty much reached it at this point. He is currently wanted by Hertha Berlin as well. That might be something we uh, look at. 12 goals and 9 assists and 40 championship games. I'm looking for someone with just a bit more quality, a bit more about them. Um, he is a good player. And I would be happy to keep him as a backup, but you never know, we might need to raise some funds. In terms of these players, then Griffiths, more than happy for him to be our goalkeeper in the Premier League. I don't think it's even a position I'll be looking at in terms of signings. You know, every position I look at during the summer, um, I will end up having to sign a, probably as a backup goalkeeper. I might try and sign a good one, but he needs to be cheap. It's not an area where I want to spend my money. Hugh Griffiths is more than good enough for the Premier League. Harewood... He's another dodgy one. Um, obviously, a new signing in January. We're signing for £350,000. He's a very, very good player. He reminds me a hell of a lot of Stankovic. He's performed very, very well in the 10 championship games he started so uh, this season. He did pick up three yellows and a red card, which is a little bit annoying. Um, one of them was that red card was a straight red card as well. Um, but if he ends up being our starting right back, I'm pleased. He's English. He's 20 years old. He's got potential. I'm happy. Uh, Gaironski as well. Happy with him being our second choice centre back, therefore getting into the first eleven. Um, but I'm hoping I can sign a much better centre back to sit there alongside him. Uh, his heading is still a little bit of an issue, but his physicals more than make up for most of his shortcomings at centre back. Mejaya was a sign in the summer that we a very cheap sign for like one point nine million pounds. With the Italian coming in, who we've got uh, Pietro Porcino. I think we've got central midfield completely covered between the two of them. I'm hoping that Mejai will start to really start progress in terms of his attributes. He hasn't really massively improved over the course of this season, but we are going to look to improve the training facilities. We'll look to improve our coaching. We'll be able to rest him a little bit more next season as well, having a capable backup, which will then aid his development because he's not always tired. Um, so I'm happy with him at central midfield. Richard Granger, he's been a huge hugely disappointing this season seven million pounds from Juventus we paid um, nine goals and eight assists for an attacking midfielder is not the best return on our money and if we fill these four spots and there's money left to spare I'm thinking attacking midfield center is the first place where I will look to improve one of these players I'm just not happy with his output and um, he still has the potential to grow he's still only 19 and um, so maybe having somebody there who's maybe first choice with him coming off the bench or becoming a rotation option will help him develop the same way Mejaya might help develop in that way as well. Jim Walker on the left-hand side, I really want to persist with this boy. He's 20 years old, he's English. He's really came on since he became natural in the left winger role. We've been playing him as an inside forward. 16 goals and 10 assists is fine by me. Physically, he's great. Mentally, not quite there, but I'm hoping that'll improve next season. Technically, he's good as well. Classed as a wonder kid. English. No brain and we've got to play him. And then Ian Chapman. He's my most conflicted one, Ian Chapman, because 
Every single season, we have had the striker. So with Barnsley, it was Lewis Montagnier. With um, Birmingham City, it was, of course, Kaichi Goto. And with Huddersfield, it was Damian Maillard. And is this our boy? Is this Leeds United striker? He's very, very good. He's very well-rounded. And in attributes where you don't necessarily need them attributes, he's fantastic. But in key areas, particularly on the technical side, he's not quite what I look for in a striker. Um, he is wanted by numerous clubs, and it might end up being a might get end up getting into a position where maybe we sell Ian Chapman to fund further signings. I will be looking for a second striker. And I'm not going to be looking for someone to play a backup to Chapman. I'm looking directly for someone to compete with Chapman and take his spot. Um, despite him having a very good season, 26 goals, 15 assists, I can't help but feel like he's just not got what I'm looking for. So a lot of these players who are not currently in the starting eleven will end up leaving the club. A lot of them won't. A lot of them will be in our squad. Um, specifically the likes of Florentino, Etem will definitely be... Uh, anyone else? Sebastian Caceres might end up being, he is currently wanted by Villa, so he might end up being sold. Same with Mbayumba. I'm happy with both of them centre-backs being backup options if we end up keeping them both. Um, players like Matty Cash is a decent enough right-back uh, alongside Matty Gibbons. One of them could end up stopping. Um, ben Pearson's contracts are running out. Do I give him a new contract? Probably not. Not at 33 years old. But yeah, so some of these players will leave. Some of them will stay. It's going to be another big summer job, as it always is. But um, we are much better equipped than at any point with any other side going into the Premier League summer transfer window than we ever have been. Barnsley was a complete remodel. Birmingham City was. Huddersfield was. We don't have to remodel this squad. We can, but we don't have to. We'll just have to wait and see what happens over the transfer window. So if you have enjoyed today's video, actually, no, stop, wait, don't click off. We're going to see how all the sides have done. Premier League, Birmingham finished 7th, Barnsley 10th, Huddersfield 14th. I'm happy with that. Montenegro, one of our strikers, finishing top goal scorer. Absolutely fantastic stuff. I'm a little bit surprised Birmingham City didn't do better with the striker they've got, Alberto Salenza. He ended up getting 21 goals in 42 games. He's just unbelievable. Why did I sign him for Birmingham City? Why didn't I just leave him to re get released? I don't know. But never mind. I'm happy to see all of our boys will remain in the Premier League for next season and we will be facing them in good time. So anyway, boys, this time for real. If you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.